are now watching The Beach. Hey guys, and welcome to this very special episode of Treasure Trove. We took a look at F-Zero GX, but in this episode, we'll be taking a look at the arcade equivalent, F-Zero AX. What is really surprising about this game is that this was my introduction to F-Zero. The first F-Zero game I played was the holy grail of the series, and being able to play it again is super exciting. So in this episode, I wanted to showcase the differences between GX and AX, because they are very similar games, and also just share more of my experience with the game, because even though it's been a very long time since I've played it, I remember it like it was yesterday, because this is a really cool game. But if you're wondering how I'm playing it here, I own the cabinet now! Pretty exciting. And my dreams. I'm playing this via Nintendo on the Wii. Same way I play the Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix games, one and two at least, because Arcade Grand Prix Deluxe runs on Techno Parrot, which is essentially a modified Windows 7 engine. So it's not the same as the other ones that are running on Triforce, which is essentially GameCube hardware. But this is also running on Triforce. But as you can see here, there's a license card system which allows you to save your game. And considering that this is an arcade game, it's an unexpected feature, but it's super cool to have. You can see we have Mrs. Arrow as the pilot, and I gotta say, there aren't many waifus I have in gaming, other than maybe Pauline, but I'm starting to question it now. But we could look at Miss Arrow all day. We want to get into the game, though. So you can see that there's the option between race and time attack. It's very similar to Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix, where it's pretty much just that. But there's a selection of six tracks. We got Mute City Sonic Oval, Areopolis Screwdrive, Outer Space Meteor Stream, Port Town Cylinder Wave, Lightning Thunder Road, which is considered to be the best track in F-Zero, AX, and GX by many, and Green Planet Spiral. So considering this is F-Zero, we're going to start off with Mute City, considering that's been tradition. And one aspect that differs from GX is with the character select screen. In F-Zero GX, selecting a pilot and machine didn't feel as intuitive, because it was pretty much just selecting it on a menu. But here it's a lot more lively. It showcases the machine you're going to use, as well as the pilot, and it looks really good. From a gameplay perspective, this isn't going to mean much, but it definitely enhances the presentation. You can see that there are quite a few pilots and machines to choose from. I believe there are 30 or so you can unlock, and that is where the license card also comes into play. But they're all in F-Zero GX as well, but to unlock the AX characters, and the AX content in general, it's going to be extremely difficult to do so. Also, we got this groovy taxi here. I'm wondering if it's a reference to Crazy Taxi considering Sega's development of the game, but considering I mostly play as Captain Falcon because my boy Biorex isn't in the game, I would go for him, but I think we're gonna go for Mrs. Arrow and the Cosmic King. So let's begin. One of the things about the game being an arcade game is it is structured a little bit differently than F-Zero GX in terms of just how the game or how the gameplay is. The gameplay at its core is very similar, but you'll see some differences from GX and AX, and that is even apparent with the first track in the game. So, from a gameplay perspective, considering we did go over GX, but if you haven't seen that video, F-Zero is a racing game, and it's very similar to that of something like Cruisin' or Gran Turismo, but only in terms of the general gameplay. So, I mean, it's not like Mario Kart in the sense of items, but that is where the similarities end with the other two, because it's focused on speed, track memorization, and just the sheer insanity that is the difficulty of the game. But that's what makes it so much fun. It's the challenge of F-Zero that just makes the game so engaging and always has me come back to it. But with F-Zero AX, from the core perspective, and considering I am using a GameCube controller to play it, it is very similar to that of GX. It's not like the Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix games where... Those games are completely different from the other Mario Kart games. I'd say even to this day, because none of the games really took inspiration from them. Those games are very focused on items, which there are hundreds of, and the tracks generally are more simplistic in design, so they are completely different games. But this is pretty much an arcade adaptation of F-Zero GX. You can see that there is a time limit, which in places, because it's an arcade game, but it also can add to some of the strategy because you'll now have to worry about running out of time as if there wasn't enough to worry about in F-Zero already. 
a game that just keeps on giving when it comes to difficulty, but the gameplay is just as great as ever before, and playing it at home using a GameCube controller, the experience is radically different from that in the arcade, because as I mentioned before, I had the luxury of playing the arcade game. I played F-Zero AX all the way back in September of 2014, and unfortunately, the arcade near me no longer has it. There were some cool features of the F-Zero AX cabinet as well, where you could put in your GameCube memory card and unlock the AX content in GX. So essentially, Amiibos before Amiibo, Nintendo was really thinking outside the box during this era. They had things like the Game Boy Advance e-reader and arcade compatibility. What an era, we'll tell you that, but unfortunately I wasn't able to do that because for one, I didn't even think about it, and two, I didn't get F-Zero GX until 2017. It was F-Zero AX that made me really want to get the game because I had such a fun experience that I just wanted to play it whenever I wanted pretty much. And with the arcade cabinet that I played, there are a few different versions. There are the standard cabinets that are just like any other racing game. But there was also the deluxe cabinet, which is the one I got to play. And what was cool about it is that the seats would rotate as you play it. If you've ever seen a 4D movie, it's like 3D, but even more immersive. You know, things like SpongeBob 4D, where the seats will move and it has aspects where you can smell what's on screen. And F-Zero AX was essentially a 4D game in a way. What I essentially mean by that is when you played the deluxe F-Zero AX cabinet, it had movement of the seats while you were driving, so much so where the action is so intense that it actually requires a seatbelt. And I'm not even joking either. And if you're wondering, I did try to play it without the seatbelt, but eventually I just decided, yeah, this is definitely a game where I need a seatbelt. And that is a sentence you probably don't hear very often. But just the experience in general, it almost kind of felt like a roller coaster ride where the seat was moving as you would drive. It's, it was just really cool. And I think there was also haptic feedback, kind of like if you played the Mario Kart Arcade Grand Prix games, where if you get hit, you can feel the steering wheel. You know, stuff along the lines of that. But regardless, it was still a very cool experience that really can't be replicated unless you do play it in an arcade. And considering the game released in 2003, and there aren't too many of them, it will be quite the opportunity and just quite the moment when you actually do get to play it. And I believe they do have them at events like MAGFest. I saw something along the lines of that, so by all means, if you come across one, it's definitely worth playing. But I could pretty much say that for all the Nintendo arcade games. Presentation-wise, F-Zero AX is very similar to GX, meaning that it still looks incredible even to this day. This goes to show that if you have a good art direction, the presentation can go a really long way, even years later, and the music is just incredible. I just love the soundtrack in this game, it has a very techno feel to it, and it really gets you pumped while you're racing. Always I'll have my GameCube on full blast when I'm playing F-Zero GX, specifically for the Port Town music, and it is just quite the experience. In terms of content, F-Zero AX has six race tracks, along with the Time Trials mode. Considering this is an arcade game, having something like a story mode wouldn't be something necessary or even expected, but I would say if the game had like 10 tracks, then I think it'd be better in terms of content. But as I said before, this is an arcade game, and it's not going to be the same experience as a console game. Really, it's just more about the experience itself than the amount of tracks in the game. And with the Time Trials mode, it doesn't matter what racing game it is, it's just not something that I'm a fan of, and I primarily just play the tracks. But what is here is excellent, and just playing the game made me remember just how cool the experience was. So we've established that F-Zero AX has excellent gameplay, an excellent presentation, and a decent amount of content for an arcade game. Although I will say, the fact that it has unlockables is still something quite uncommon for arcade games, and just, it still is kind of mind-blowing. So what's the verdict? F-Zero AX is a very cool game, and if you find one in an arcade, I'd highly recommend playing it. The experience is going to be one you'll always remember, more so if you play the deluxe cabinet, but even if you just find the standard one, then it definitely is just worth playing. Although I can really say that for most Nintendo arcade games, as I said before, but AX itself is really just GX, but adapted for the arcade. You have the time limit, there are less tracks, there's just less content in general, and, you know, the tracks themselves, although they're excellent, it definitely feels like they were more designed for the arcade in mind. But regardless, F-Zero AX gets the ranking of treasure. 
If you're interested in playing F-Zero AX, there's actually a list of locations that still have the game. There aren't many of them out there, but if you're interested in seeing if an arcade near you still has the game, it is worth checking out. Unfortunately, no arcades near me have the game anymore, but regardless, it still is worth looking into. So what do you guys think? Have you played F-Zero AX before? Let me know in the comments and keep calm and da-da on.